We are here to do some watercolour painting. About bloody time. Have you missed me painting? Have you not watched one for a while? Well, now's your chance we're going to do it. I don't know what we're going to do. We're just going to chuck some paint to paper. Call yourself a bloody professional. We've got a piece of watercolour paper, quarter imperial. Pop that there. And uh, we'll switch over to the overhead camera, which is right here. And basically, nice and easy, what we're going to do here is, if you notice, this is actually stuck to a board. OK, so get yourself prepped. We are filming this as though it's live, so there's no actual editing as such here. So get this stuck to a board ready for action. And then we're going to go for this. I want to start off with a bit of masking tape, long enough to go across the picture. Well, it's going to be some kind of landscape. We'll put that across there. Um, fairly straight landscape, nice and easy. Put that across. And then I'm going to jump over to the actual palette. Now, if you want to do a live virtual watercolour workshop with me on Sunday, the one that's happening this Sunday, for example, the 15th, of September 2024 all you need is your primary colours so all you actually need is yellow blue and red paint you want anything else and two brushes will do you so just a size 10 and a size 6 two brushes three colours and you're ready to go and um, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to use this brush here which is a Matthew Palmer tree and texture brush large okay I'm going to use this brush and I'll make sure it's nice and clean and very simply what I want to do I'm going to pop a little bit of a tilt under the board and I'm going to wet the paper. Now this is cotton paper, so it's a lovely surface to work on. Really nice surface to work on. And we just put a lot of water onto it, of course. Now it doesn't matter if you get a few stray hairs. There's a stray pubic, a st sorry, a stray hair there. We'll cut that bit out. Doesn't really matter. So lovely paper. This is the new stuff. This is this is gorgeous paper. You will enjoy using this. A nice coverage. I want to paint in a bit of a bit of an evening kind of sky. I think that'd be quite nice. So stay with me while we create something on this bit of paper. Yeah, bloody mess. We're gonna go straight in here, and uh, we're gonna jump in. I have got some kitchen paper, by the way, just in case I start crying. Because you never know. You never know what colours we're gonna use. You tell me. I'm going to use some natural orange, natural orange, because autumn's in the air, you can sniff it, you can sniff it, <laughs> sniff it, you can smell it, yeah, look, I'm from Derbyshire, I'm a simple guy, simple guy, chucking paint on paper, yeah, you're not kidding, there you go, so a lovely bit of orange, beautiful bit of orange there, can't go wrong with that, probably a mistake wearing a white t-shirt today, but hey-ho, in for a penny, in for a pound, we'll bring that in, lovely bit of natural orange, we're going to jump back over to palette, and then we're going to jump into this colour, which is a uh, natural violet. Put a bit more red in that, I think. A nice bit of violet. Can't go wrong with this. And smell the fear, can't you? So a bit of a purple. Beautiful. Beautiful. We'll bring that in and what we'll do here is we'll go across the top and we'll sweep it in get your paint mixing on your paper nice bit of drama look at that i love that look how the paint all nicely mixes together get that gorgeous transition in colors all smoothing them together that's done with a tree brush weirdly but it works okay um, what I want to do next, I'm actually going to change the size of the brush. I want to go for the uh, small tree and texture brush when I can find it. Someone's pinched it. There we go. We've got a small Matthew Palmer tree and texture brush next. We're going to use some natural grey, 50 shades of grey. Beautiful. Can't go wrong with that. Let's get a little bit closer into this so we know what we're doing. And we're going to put some clouds into this using a tree brush. Because it's a nice shape for doing clouds. 
I'm going to twist in the grey. Give it a good twirl. But you can see that the paint is still wet. So what's happening here is the paint is spreading. It's bleeding. This is what you, bleeding paint. This is what you call bleeding paint. We'll bring that in there. Put a little bit more coming down. Let's get a little bit over here as well. It's having a quality paper. Everything's available online. Having a quality paper really makes a difference. This is cotton paper, so always, always try to go for cotton if you can. It just stays wetter longer. Is it me or is it moist? That's important. Moisture is important, right? Yeah. Let's get a little bit of a twist going through here. I'm looking forward to getting some more, a few shadows and things on here. Highlights. A nice fiery orange sky, beautiful sunset, beautiful. Although I can get the paint flowing, a little bit, a little bit dramatic, a little bit, a little bit of drama. We get some nice skinny ones. I'm literally using the small tree and texture brush. Just have a quick search online for these, you'll see them. Now I'm picking up a normal brush. Well, it's actually a, a super point brush. It's a super point brush, uh, medium size. And we're going to add a few little bits of highlights to the bottoms of these clouds. So any hard lines and whiz across them. And very simply, we're going to soften them. We want to soften them in a little bit. Now, what's really nice about this is all the warm colours are at the bottom, aren't they? Which means that the sun has obviously gone down, which is quite effective. So what that means is that we can really have that nice, effective, sort of vivid brightness, underlit illumination. I'm squeezing the brush every time and wiping the bottoms. As the actress said to the bishop, we'll bring it in and we'll go across and we'll just basically soften and I'm literally wiping with the side of the brush. If I show you this camera, you might see it better, actually. As you can see, the bottom wiping exercise. <laughs> you can see the bottom wiping exercise in all its juicy detail. Look at that. The algorithm is going to be uh, picking up the words bottom wiping exercise. And I'll not get many likes for this video. If you are watching this, by the way, on the YouTube channel, do make sure you like the video. <laughs> because this will also... As well as going out on Facebook, it would also go out on uh, YouTube. The Facebook page, by the way, for those people that aren't watching it, is uh, Matthew Palmer Artist. You can like the page, follow the page. I think there's about 140 videos on my YouTube channel. 99.99.9% of them are watercolour. I love that. Look at the illumination you've got in those clouds. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Happy with that. I am. I'm quite pleased with that. Looking nice. Save it. That's good. Excellent. Um, it's time for an important part of the picture, which is a quick sip of the old water. We're going big budget. We've got Morrison's Yorkshire Vale Spring Water. Sparkling. Look at that. Cheers. It's not gin. It tastes surprisingly like gin, but it's not. Back to this. Let's put some trees across. A few trees. I think we might actually put a windmill on this, you know. That might be quite nice. Or some kind of structure or something. A power station in the background. I don't think you're taking this very serious today, Mr Palmer. We're having a bit of fun, aren't we? It's Thursday. Thursdays are the new Fridays, right? What we're going to do here is get a little bit autumnal. We're going to use a medium-sized tree and texture brush. Which apparently... It's good for painting medium sized trees, is it not? We're going to use some orange and mix it with grey. Kind of a bit sort of silhouetted. So a nice deep orange. Might chuck a bit of red in there just to make it slightly brown. 
just to pull the brush, beautiful. And then what we're going to do here, which is quite nice, is we're going to go in and we're going to stipple across the horizon uh, with the brush. Now, if we get close in on this camera, you'll see it slightly better, I think. So we're going to go in here. Now, this is what makes these brushes unique. These are the original tree brushes, which I, this particular one that you see in here, this medium sized one was the brush I first ever brought out. Um, I designed and developed it in the late nineties. It's gone through various revamps and new additions, but that's the basic brush that we're talking about here. So a nice stipple across. Now this is a bit of a, a soft brown. We'll create some depth, let that disappear off into the distance. And then we're gonna come back to this and we'll, we'll pick that up, we'll pick it up over this side. So basically what you do with your brush is you mix it in and stipple it. Now the power of live streaming means we can do this in slow motion. Bang the camera. So if we get the camera here, we can see it being mixed into the brush. This is the new slow motion feature that we've got. Mix it into the brush. Bring it up. And then wait for it. And then back to normal. Is that not the future of watercolour teaching? You've just witnessed the future of watercolour teaching right there. We'll bring that in. New feature. Slow motion. Bring that across. Now what I want to do here is just put a bit more detail, a little bit more clarity to the tops of these trees, just while things are starting to dry off. I do want to put some shadows in, but with every little tap of your brush, you get that sort of distant effect. I'm going to put some sort of building in the middle. Not sure what. Maybe we should put a, a Morrison so we can buy some sparkling mineral water. If you're from different parts of the world, the Morrison's is a, is a fine quality supermarket. I'm not sponsored by Morrison's, by the way. We're going to pop a little bit of grey into this because we need darkness, don't we? We need to go darker. Beautiful. Back to this. Again, a little bit of a tappy tap. So we're going a bit autumnal here. Wintery autumn, that kind of colour. Love the colours in the skies here. So we're going darker. Working across. Again, you can see how the brush has got those lovely individual prongs and that little stipple of your brush works really, really well. I do want to go that little bit darker again for this. So I want to just go grey by itself at this point. Don't be afraid, honestly, of darkness. Do not be afraid of dark colours. Let's get a bit closer in for you. You can't go wrong with this. You can smell it. The excitement that is. We'll bring it in. Make sure things are really quite dark. Beautiful. Love that. So that nice kind of cast across there. Really effective. We'll give the brush a nice clean. And what I want to do here is I want to very gently um, remove the masking tape. So with a little bit of care, we can take that tape away. Now, seepage is a thing is it not it sometimes creep sometimes creeps down the back and uh yeah like the sky love the underlit cloud effect but obviously we're going to work in this foreground here we're going to do something down here what that may be yeah i don't quite know but i think we're going to start off with a size 10 brush uh we'll jump back to the palette back to the palette here and we've got some colors we've got some uh, natural green natural green again you can get all these online so do have a look on the website for information about all the colors that's natural green we've got some green light ready-made greens you can mix your own we've got the gray we've got a bit of orange to get the autumnal vibes coming through still beautiful and we could even use a bit of this brown stuff we need deep in it we could use some of that we could use a bit of that and literally, we're going to go in and block all this in. We're not going to be concerned about how messy it looks. We're just going to enjoy it. It's not as though anybody's watching me. It's just me on myself, sat in this lonely room. Sad but true. I'm going to go in. This is green. Yeah, I can see that. And then we'll get, we'll get the light green. 
we're going to mix and match mix and match on the paper this is this is natural green light i'm literally putting the colors on with extreme freedom making a bloody mess if you ask me i've got the green light there natural green light these colors are very thick i want to get a bit of orange in there let's put the palette on the screen we can do that look at that another future that beats the slow motion function right we'll get some orange in just because i think in the autumn you can can't you get a little bit of orange creeping in just a touch uh more of the dark green to be fair because that's quite a key color and more of the light green as well as we get towards the back towards the horizon Can just sweep in, leave that little bit of a gap. You remember the brown that we mixed? The brown here. I'll pop a bit of that in the corners. And then I'm just going to use a bit of water here. Just to go in and just lightly skim up towards that horizon. So basically I've just got water on my brush, nothing else, just water. Again, I'm working very quickly, folks. We've been talking um, just before we did this watercolour demo, we were talking about, you know, live virtual workshops, something I've been teaching for a good uh, four and a half to five years. And these are very much slow and steady, holding your hand. What I'm doing here is very much that watercolour demonstration vibe. So we're working quickly and speedy at this but we've painted a, a meadow if you like a long tall chunk of massive green i do want to go a bit darker in the foreground though i'm not afraid to go darker but he's terrified we can get a little bit of this gray here and we're going to go darker it's the evening don't be afraid to be darker we've darkened the foreground I have actually got a plastic card here. This one is from Lambranda Hotels and Resorts. I wonder where that came from. I've got a Nan Summers loyalty card back here, but I don't tend to use that because someone left it at a painting workshop. It's a little bit sticky around the edges. I tend to leave it there. A comical effect. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this. And we're going to scrape away. I've ruined it. We're going to scrape away some shapes. I'm literally putting the card, literally, you'll see it on this side view here, literally flat to the paper here. And it creates like a little bit of a banking kind of thing. And I think that looks really nice if we come down here as well. It's just a nice way of adding texture because the paper that we're using does have quite a bit of texture. You can make, you know, like it's a grassy kind of banking type thing. And it looks, I think it looks really effective. So we'll sweep across like this. Beautiful way of working. I can create some shadows and various things if you need to. But really, if I'm honest, that needs a bit of time to dry. So. This bit is kind of like watching paint dry, folks, unfortunately. I've got a heat gun or a hair dryer. This is a great time for me to tell you about what's coming up, of course, this weekend. So if you're watching me live on the 12th, on the 15th of September, I'm teaching a beautiful harvest themed workshop. We need people to book in this. Um, and it's paint a harvest time farm in a beautiful landscape with old cottages, golden fields and hay bales. Complete step-by-step -step tuition. I bet a lot of you watching this are already booked on. You can watch it live or at any time. It is yours to keep forever. So what you do is you jump on the old website. This is the website here, all the W's, uh, watercolor.tv. Big button at the top of the screen, tap on that. That takes you to the page where you can simply book in to the workshop. And it's £12. Um, it's got a live chat room. It's got a Q&A 
um, session we run polls it's in lovely high quality and if you are watching it live there's about 20 spaces left for this one on Sunday so quite a few spaces yet so do please support me and get that booking in um, you can stick around afterwards and you can join in the whole kind of workshop sort of critique session where you can send in your pictures so do please you know get yourself booked into it if you've not already had chance to because I really would love to see you there on Sunday folks what can you get for 12 quid you can't even get a coffee and a cake at the side of the M1 but you rob dogs so do think about that do think about that and you can watch it at any time from anywhere around the world it starts at 10 a.m uk but as we mentioned it really doesn't matter if you do it at a later stage because it's yours to keep i'm going to drive this off the audio goes funny or quiet so i'll tell you a joke i'll tell you a joke in sign language Looks very suspicious what I'm doing down here, waving my arm off camera. <laughs> I'm sweating. You're not the only one. <laughs> oh, that's a bit suspicious on camera today. We'll put that bit out. And it starts to dry up plastic flat as well. Losing control of this one, aren't we? What we're going to do next, folks, is take some more mapping tape. I'm going to drop this across the horizon. <laughs> Make sure that you don't dry pictures on this camera against it looks a bit dodgy. All I'm saying that way, I'm right-handed. Yeah, that's a relief. I'll just remove the stickiness from that. And we'll pop this, uh, why is it sticky? You don't want to know. We'll pop that on there. And then we're going to put a windmill there. Why not? We can put a windmill on, can't we? Because we're professionals and we know what we're doing. Let's chuck a windmill on, folks. Um, what we are going to do here, dead easy for this. We're going to be using a size 10 brush again. And we're going to get some fresh colours. Natural grey is one of the best colours. I've got my little drawer of paints behind me. There's some grey. We're going to use a bit of that. A bit of grey. 50 shades of grey. I promise I am much more professional during the Sunday broadcast. And we have a good heavy grey here. Beautiful. We're going to use that with a size 10 or a medium Matthew Palmer Super Point brush. Can't go wrong. And the plan of action is to go simply go in and add some lovely, um, vivid, rich shadows yeah but where's where's your light coming from no idea to be honest all i know is we've got a gap there that needs filling so let's fill the gap let's fill the gap about here nice nice juicy windmill in the middle of the field it's going to be slightly rustic like me get rough around the edges like me we'll bring it across Turn that over, tricky bit, and then we'll come down here. Now we're still using this colour. Still wet that paint. That's the sign of quality paper, that. Beautiful, that. Look at that. Gorgeous, rich colour. Don't be afraid of this. If you want to sketch it in first, go for it. Or you can simply live life dangerously and block it in. We're going to put the grey in. Now in the middle, in this gap here, I want a bit of colour. So I've got this browny, sort of ready colour that we mixed for the trees. I want to use a bit of that to be fair. A bit of red brick colour. Put that in there. Are people still watching? <laughs> yeah, that's a relief. All these years of hard work and I've got somebody watching at last. We're gonna come we're gonna come down. Bring it in. 
I want to get that so it's got a bit of light on it. Because at the minute, you can see where we're going with it, can't you? I told you we painted the power station, but I want to use the plastic card again. And I want to add a bit of light to it. So I want to go from the outside and just scrape over. Make sure you take it away. So basically put it on and then sort of just go in like that and ease the pressure off as you move back. It's quite a simple little process, really. Just for you. And I think what that does is not only does it put a bit of light on the power station cooling tower. Yes, if you've just joined us, we are painting a power station at the side of the motorway. All them years of hard work have paid off. Carol says I'm on form today. Do you know what? I've had such a stressful few weeks. You can't, you can't be stressed doing your job. It's nice just to do something casual and have a, a laugh and a joke with you. So I hope you're enjoying this little bit of a light-hearted look at watercolours. Basically what I'm saying is I'm not taking it very serious. But look how that's given a lovely effect of texture. A lovely effect of texture. And it's been so busy these past few weeks. Not a time to breathe. It's been nice just to do something a bit more easy going. Now at the top of this, we'll get right close into this beautiful, tricky bit. We're going to use the grey again, 50 shades of grey. Uh, I've got a small brush, which is actually a size 6. You can see it's branded up as Matthew Palmer Super Point. Guess what? They're all available online. If you want to be more serious at painting, you should probably not subscribe to my channel. <laughs> If you want to be a bit more chilled out and enjoy life a bit, then you should subscribe to my channel on, on YouTube. Or as, my dad, or as my dad used to call it, on the YouTube. On the what? The YouTube. The YouTube. What's the YouTube? The YouTube. We'll bring that across. The YouTube. That's what I call it. Bring that over. Beautiful. And then we'll make that a bit darker. I also want to... Uh, I also want to put a play out there. We need a play. Your art teacher needs you. And what does he need you for? He needs you not only to subscribe to the channel, but also he needs you to book him for the workshop because if you want to see me finish this windmill, you've got to subscribe to the channel. <laughs> and then you've got to book into this. Sunday the 15th, folks, come on. We're going to paint a harvest scene together in beautiful, gorgeous, step-by-step -step detail. 12 quid. Literally watching paint dry, but entertaining at the same time. What we're going to do here is we're going to go over and we're just going to use some of that brown to put the roof on. The light reflects massively against the paper here, so we'll bring that over. Can't go wrong with that. Look at that stunning. That is really, really nice. I love the texture. Look at that beautiful texture. Now, obviously, on the top of this, we're going to put some sails and various stuff how are we going to do the sails on this thing well actually we can do that in a really straightforward relaxed easy going way but just before we do that while the masking tape is still kind of there and doing its job what i want to do folks is use this which is the small tree and texture brush which is the one i use for painting the the clouds actually we did it for the clouds we didn't we so we can use that we've got this uh natural green paint here quite thick quite quite thick and we're going to take that and we're going to give it a good old whack in the palette again we'll do it in slow motion and this is nice because what we can do with this is we can actually go in and uh, yes we are zooming in live because we're not actually editing this Add a little bit of bushy type stuff around the bottom there. Now that wants to be quite dark. I mean, bushes would be green in the autumn. Yours might be. <laughs> and <laughs> Sorry, we're going to put the... Uh, we'll leave a gap there. Leave a little gap there. Leave a little gap. Because we're going to put a little gateway there. Not a Morrison's, a gateway. We'll come across here. Let's come back with camera. Just a bit, just a smidge, a smidgen. And put that down there so we'll get a little bit of a hedgerow kind of quite dark i suppose we could put a bit of orange in we've got some haven't we trick it in beautiful that 
We'll take the tape away, nice and steady, nice and steady, take your time. And that'll give you that edge, that gives you the edge. Let's come back with the camera. So you've got that nice kind of edge, there you go. Looks all right, miss. And then what you said, it will come over here as well. And we're going to add some more of the dark stuff over here. Again, dark greens. I think I want to get a bit of orange in there just to make it have a little bit of interesting sort of browny kind of colours, autumnal thing going off up here. But really, I mean, a hedgerow tends to pretty much stay hedgerows in the autumn. You get berries and stuff, but you don't tend to get much in the way of oranges and browns and stuff. That's quite nice. I like that. We're going to put shadows and all sorts on here. It's just like watching paint dry. We'll bring that across. Beautiful. And then uh, let's see what we're going to do now. So that's how it's looking at the minute. I want to go grey and get some shadows in. Get some shadows down here. Obviously we're going to put detail on the top of the windmill. Make a bit of a footpath or something coming down there. I think it'd be quite effective. So I'm just sort of darkening the landscape a little bit here. This is... It's literally using whatever's in the palette, if I'm honest with you. Whatever's in the palette. It doesn't really matter to me what's in the palette, really, because all those colours have been used. So it all kind of comes out in wash, as they say. Um, we know where the light's coming from. It's coming from this side. So we'll get a shadow from that windmill. That would be sensible. There you go. So having that darkness sort of shearing across is quite nice. Let's just rotate the board this way a little bit. The light tends to reflect here quite a bit, so we'll bring in some darkness coming down here. Let's get a crack in this, we're going to miss the chase. I'll bring it across. I'm going to miss calendar news. What? That's sort of created that sort of landscapey, uneven kind of thing that's happening there. Again, I've got the masking tape underneath. I'm trying to make sure the light doesn't reflect against the paper because it tends to. I want to put some detail on the top of this thing now. It's about time. Uh, but before that, we need to have a drink of Morrison's water, the future of water from Yorkshire. <laughs> Not sponsored by Morrison's. I'm not really. Right, what are we doing then? Sales. Sales. Should come on. Beautiful, nice bit of strong grey. I want to pop a bit of, uh, if you've got some natural brown or some kind of a burnt umber or something, which is a brownie tinge, put that in your grey and it'll make it look a bit deeper, you see. That nice silhouette effect. I want to use the edge of a plastic card for this. Pop that on there. Pop it on the. What that'll do is that'll give me the chance to paint the edge quite easily with the windmill. Can't go wrong with this. So we're going to go in and we're going to pop that like about here. And we're going to stamp it just like so. Plenty of pressure. Look at that. Beautiful. That makes that process easy don't it you know painting down the edge of the card you just got to be brave got to be bold and brave when you do that bold and brave look at that nice strong color down the edge of the card can't go wrong plenty of color beautiful and then again we're going to go up there put one up there stick one on there beautiful and we're going to also put one here Possibly go wrong, eh? There you go. Easy way to do that. Really easy way to do it. Not not a scary way to do it, is it? That just bang, bang, bang. It just goes on with a bit of ease. I think. I'm sure it does. I think that's it. That's now obviously wanting some kind of a detail to go with that. You know, it needs detail. It needs some added clarity and oomph to it. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing now. We're going to work 
into this now things are drying off we're going to work in with a bit more detail and sharpness i've got a good brush for that and um, the brush i'm actually using is a super point brush with that same color the gray and the brown you could use something a bit finer if you wanted to if but to be honest i think that'll quite happily do the job this nice pointy brush will be absolutely fine for this if we get close into this here we're going to drop that down so we can start to pull some detail into this thing like that we'll rotate this thing around you didn't see that did you there you go i put them lines on did you see that best bit of picture we're going to go up it's a shambles this demo a shambles bring it up and then we're going to go up and just connect these little sails with the occasional little random bit of stuff little spots and dots just every now and again see what i mean just gives it a bit of that beautiful sort of silhouette of the windmill adding little bits of clarity little bits of sharpness little bits of detail i think it works really well the colors are strong on this they really are sticking to me end again just little bits of random stuff i always think it looks nice on a something like a windmill to have them little bits of detail there you go so that that sort of slat lattice kind of work it, i think personally it looks really well can't go wrong can you so let's come in here and do these two here we're not going to see them overlapping there might bring a bit of white into that we'll see how the paint how the time goes i'm holding the brush like a pen Again, those little bits of whatever they might be. Personally, I think look really effective. And then over here, beautiful, very vibrant, you know, sun's gone down. That's the kind of time of day we're talking about, right? You can see how I'm literally using the tip of the brush to do this. When it comes to silhouettes, the more little bits you can add, the better. Looks nice that. It's ni nice to see that bit of detail. Nice easy way of doing it. And then we're going to just make sure things are dark around here. I think we should add obviously some little bits of detail to the windmill as well quite often you'll see a little bit sneaking down the back connect that up a little bit so you just pop in little bits of random things on the back again that light because the paint's so strong here that the light's bouncing off it so Gonna do a little bit of a bit of random stuff. There's always a few dangly bits, isn't there, on windows? Always a few little bits that just sort of a little bit of old rope just. Just drooping down there. Get the impression of a, a window or two. Doorway.
old rustic, seen better days fence. I'm gonna get that replaced. Give us a bit of scale. It's a five bar gate with four bars and we'll put the middle bit in. There we go. And I'm just gonna skim over some of these edges just to make sure things are that texture. But I like that little bit of a gateway there. Put some bearded chuffs in the sky. Just one. Symbolic, that. Symbolic. I like how the trees are very much out of focus and got that softness. But look, I mean, look at this. This picture has drama, right? This is this is dark, this is dramatic, this is not vibrant, <coughs> pretty colourful um, paintings. That needs a second to dry, folks. And while it is having a second to dry, I just want to have a little chat to you. I want to just mention um, a huge well done again. A lot of you have joined me while I've been doing this. Huge well done to people that took part in this. This was the workshop that we did. And uh, we'll get the camera to show it better. There you go. This was the painting that we did on Sunday. In fact, I'll show it on here. Um, this was done on Sunday the um, 8th of September 2024 this was the heather in the moorland landscape now this was done on one of the virtual workshops so while things are drying off just briefly just want to quickly mention this if I just jump onto the website just for a second and I just want to quickly show you how you can take a look at all of the uh, previous workshops that are out there because there's 193 94 um, if you jump on to the workshop page of watercolor.tv links are in the description by the way and click on the previous workshop menu item it's just here I'll click on that that will take you to the page you can browse all the previous workshops and we've done some absolute belters over the course of the past four and a half to five years the heather we did the lovely needles uh, lighthouse we did the, the greetings cards the flatford mill a huge collection but if you want to do the one that's happening this sunday which is the one we're talking about here jump onto the website or the w's watercolor.tv so i had a question come through right at the top you can see that big flashy green turquoise button that's the date of the upcoming one click it that takes you to the booking page we've got about 17 or 18 spaces left for that workshop i'd love to see you on it it's taking place this sunday the 15th of september and we're going to be traveling to the beautiful beautiful uh lake district sunday the 15th of september a harvest time scene with a beautiful landscape with old cottage golden fields that kind of thing so it's going to be a really enjoyable day's painting folks and i encourage you to jump on book it and it's yours to keep forever so don't worry if you can't make it there live on sunday because obviously people are busy doing stuff how it works is you get an email sent on sunday morning which you can use whenever you like there's three links so there's one link that you can watch it on watercolor tv with questions q a live chat live polls really nice private way to do it the second link takes you to a page that you can just watch it on a web browser you can send that to your tvs if you use the YouTube TV app or you want to watch it on YouTube, there's a link for YouTube as well. So you can do it that way. So there's the best of three, all private, just people that we invite in. And it's all filmed in 4K. So it's really nice quality. All these cameras are 4K. So do please jump on, have a look at it. Let's get back to this. I mean, this is looking as though it's pretty much there. Um, there's not a huge amount to do, if I'm honest, on this picture. I just want to put a little bit of highlights in in here and there just to give a little bit of brightness to it that would be a really good thing to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the palette back on the screen pop that there and we're going to take some white paint yes Matthew Palmer white is what I'm interested in there it is don't want too much of that a little bit of white a little bit of water just want to put a little bit of brightness in this thing lovely opaque white color so you could use acrylic or something for this, should you want to do it that way. It's just totally, totally up to you how you want to go this, go about doing this. You're in charge, really. So, how are we going to tackle this then? Very simply. It seems very dark for some reason today. I don't know why. A very dark screen. 
there we go. Um, just little bits of highlights, just very subtle little bits here and there, catching a bit of light. Less is more, to be honest. So little bits down the edge of some of these, down these posts. Just little bits, catching edge. I'm going to soften these in. I might just put a few little white flowers on. What's those things that you see in the hedgerows at the minute around here, around the UK? Something. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. Rotweed or something, is it? I don't know. You tell me. Rotweed? I can't even, can't even tell you, to be honest. They're like little flowers that spread everywhere. You know what they're called, don't you? Let's put a little bit where it overlaps the building. So just on the edge of the sails where it overlaps the building. Because that little bit of white will just make it pop forward. Can you see? Just that little bit of contrast. It just it just helps, I think, to give it that little bit of highlight there. It doesn't want much in the way of white, just a, a, a smidgen. A few little white dots around. Something like that. I think it just brightens it up, to be honest. Let's come back with the camera a little bit here so we can see. Just a few little little flicks of white just to catch a nice little bit of light just coming across from this side. I think it actually worked quite nicely, to be honest. Doesn't want much, doesn't want much white. A sniff. Just like a little little burst of light just sweeping across. And I think it makes a quite an interesting little uh, watercolour painting, to be honest. Very dramatic, very powerful, got a lot of drama to it. We'll pop this on there. That mounts a little bit on the big side. So what we'll do is we'll take the tape away. And we'll see it against the white background. We can get the tape off. That'll look quite clean if we do this. I always think it looks messy with tape on but... Whip it off. And I think that's enough to say, yeah, it's a quick picture, it's a quick demo. Messy, I mean, they've got paint everywhere, to be honest, but you know, that's the way these things are. And then we'll stick that mount on it as well. That should look quite nice against the almost a double mount effect. Beautiful, that. Look at that. Quite, quite a pretty little scene, really, for watercolours. But listen, blind, bindweed, Alison's got it. Alison, we were talking about it at a workshop on a Saturday, weren't we? That stuff that you see in all the hedgerows, little white cone-shaped flowers, bindweed, I was looking at a comment there. But listen, I'm sorry that was a little bit um, crazy. It was a bit mad. Mr Palmer was a bit mad on that one. But I enjoyed it. It was good fun. This is what we've done. I've enjoyed painting it. It's been a nice picture to do. And have a go yourself. Uh, don't forget to check out watercolour.tv for loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of tuition. Just put some new lessons on there for Watercolour TV members. And remember, I want to see you on Sunday where we can paint very slowly and very steady. Thank you for watching. I need to go for a lie down now. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.